This video is on 525. We're working on um, module four, topic one, lesson two. Uh, we're gonna be going through activity one and two, skipping quite a bit, but uh, pretty much going through um, the, the warm up, getting started, and those activities. So, starting out, um, the learning goals here it says rewrite rational numbers. So, we're gonna talk about what rational is as either terminating or repeating decimals. We're also going to be practicing writing, uh, repeating decimals as fractions and identify numbers that are not rational as irrational numbers. Then we have some key vocabulary terms out to the right. Um, the first thing that we're going to do, rewrite each fraction as a, as a decimal and plot it on a number line. We're going to take this fraction and convert it to a decimal. In order to do that, you take the numerator and you divide it by the denominator. So this is writing it as a 5 divided by 8. Five, eight doesn't go into evenly into um, to get five, so we're gonna put a decimal and a zero. When we do that, we're also gonna put a decimal here. Right, eight can't go into five, so it goes into it zero times. Um, we're probably, we're gonna be going to a thousands place, so I'm gonna put more decimals as we progress, but here, right, we're gonna skip count by eight to get to 50 without going over, right? Um, the, the nearest multiple would be six, because eight times six is 48. Or you could borrow here, but the distance from these two numbers is two. Let's put a zero for the hundreds place and bring that down. Six can go into 20, that is two times. All right, it's eight, or sorry, eight can go into 20 um, two times, which is 16. And if you subtract, you get four. And we're gonna see that if I put a zero for the thousands place, it will, this is a terminating decimal, meaning that it's a decimal that doesn't continue forever. It stops at some point. Um, 8 times 5 is 40 evenly. So our answer here, I, I know we're, we're going to be inclined to say that this is like 0 0.625, and it is, but the way that we would say this, the 6 is in the tenths place, 2 is in the hundredths place, the 5 is in the thousandths place. How you say this number, you, would, you read this first, you say 625, and then you say the last place value. So 625 thousandths. All right, graphing this on a number line, or it's not going to be on the negative side of it. It's going to be on the positive side of it. This is positive 0.5. Um, I think this is 6, 7, 8, 9. So this is 0 0.6. This right here, I'll go up here, 0 0.7. Right, 625 thousandths is closer to 6. It's a quarter of the way through. So halfway would be right in between. I'm going to say right over here is where this number should be. All right, so that is, let's write it here, 625 thousandths. Okay. <clears throat> um, you're welcome to do the next one as you do, converting 6 divided by 25, but we're going to move on to getting started, which is um, an introduction to maybe new vocabulary, but um, you have, maybe have seen this in your previous classes. So we're going to be talking about a bunch of different types of numbers. Um, and classifying those numbers. These are the various things that you could classify it as. So first thing is natural numbers consist of numbers that you use um, to count objects. These are also called counting numbers. So literally, the, the simplest way we can say it, it's like when you count with your fingers, right? One, two, three, so on. This doesn't include zero, it doesn't include negative numbers, and it doesn't include partial numbers like, um, like fractions or, or decimals that aren't whole, okay? Um, for this, number one, why do you think the, the people call this set of numbers a set of counting numbers? Because you count with it. Um, we're going to say because you can count. Because you can count. Um, I'll say starting at one, right? Starting at one. Right? And then so on. <clears throat> Next one. Right, we're familiar with whole numbers, but we have to think about right, what is entail, entailed in the set of whole numbers. So it is, um, you have used the set of whole numbers. Whole numbers are the natural numbers, so what we did above, um, and the number zero. That's the only difference here. It is zero plus all of the natural numbers. Uh, the, ident the additive identity. Now what additive identity means is that if you take a number and you add zero to it, you get that same number. That's what it means. We know a plus zero would be a. 
So y is zero, the additive property. Um, well, we, do, we just put it there, but uh, when you add it to any number, the sum is that number. And we're just gonna say that this is our answer here. Whoops, okay, give me a second. That's our answer. Because any number plus zero is that number. Right, so whole numbers, when we say whole numbers, we mean it's zero and then one, two, three, and then so on. We're gonna put an ellipses at the end. So it's, it, you gotta think about the difference between natural counting numbers or whole numbers. It's just whole numbers also has zero, okay? It, um, it, it does not have negative though, uh, negative numbers. Okay, explain why having zero makes the whole, uh, makes a set of whole numbers more useful than the set of natural numbers. Um, the reason for this is that uh, numbers are more useful when you have a way of indicating that there's no value. Like, right, I could count that there's one student, two students, but there's possible where there could be like zero students. Um, so we're gonna put that zero is useful. Um, of, we'll say of indicating no value of indicating okay all right next one so the one that we mainly deal with in, in pre-algebra is integers so the set of integers is a set that includes um, all whole numbers and their additive inverses now what we mean by additive inverses is that you can right it entails zero here um, right that if you add any number I'm gonna put a variable a and if I add this with negative a it's equal to zero so like 2 plus a negative 2 equals 0 negative 2 is the additive inverse of positive 2 um, so what is the additive inverse of, of a number it's just literally that same number but with a negative sign and it should equal 0 so an example here we could say like 2 plus put a negative 2 is equal to 0 all right, and then represent the set of integers using set notation. So we're gonna put set brackets. It is starting, I'm gonna put dot, 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 because this continues from the left side infinitely, negative three, negative two, negative one, and then the set of natural and then counting numbers, zero, one, and two. All right, so these are numbers that we deal with. These are the numbers on our number line. Um, so that's pretty much how, how you would describe it, numbers on a number line. Okay, let's go to move on to the next part, which is getting to rational numbers. So rational numbers here, I want you to above this to write the word fraction. That's what it means. A, a rational number is a number that you can write in the form A over B. It any number, so it's any number that can be written as a fraction. So um, you know what? Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and, and fill this Venn diagram. So number six. It says complete the Venn diagram using the set of numbers in the word bank. So um, the most specific word that we can have at the center of this is natural numbers. Natural, and then I'll put uh, counting in parentheses because that's also what it's called. Count Natural numbers or counting numbers. So natural numbers, remember counting numbers, one, two, three. So like, let's say uh, I put three. I mean, three can be written as a fraction. Three is rational. Like, give me any fraction that could be equal to three. Let's say um, 12 divided by four. That's three. So that it can be written as any type of fraction where, where the whole, sorry, the numerator and denominator are some type of integer. Um, that's natural. The next one would be in this pink section. That is whole numbers. Remember, whole numbers are the same thing as um, natural numbers, except it has a zero. So let's put zero here. All right, I can represent a zero as a fraction. Like let's say zero divided by five. Zero cookies, five friends, each cookie or each friend gets zero cookies. Um, so that is, right, we can represent that as a fraction. Integers would be the next one. So remember, integers is all whole numbers. So zero, one, two, three, but also includes negative numbers. So like, let me put a negative whole number. Let's say negative five. We can represent that as a fraction. Uh, let's say negative 10 over two. All right, that would be equal to five. 
And this whole thing comes under the umbrella of rational numbers. Right, anything that can be written as a fraction. So like fractions are rational because pretty much you're just asking yourself, is a fraction a fraction? Yeah, one half is a fraction. Even decimals, like 0 0.5, well, that's actually equal to, oops, let me zoom in. Right, that's equal to, so any terminating decimal is a rational number. Well, we'll get to that later, actually. All right, anyway, so we label this. Um, let's go to the, through these uh, various um, examples. It says in, the, in previous courses, you have learned about the additive inverse. So you've learned this in like, this is actually, you learn this typically in math seven, uh, multiplicative inverse, additive identity, and multiplicative identity. So consider each set, and we're gonna say which one uh, of, of these four, each, each of these sets are. Um, natural numbers. Uh, the natural numbers has only one identity, um, and that is the multiplicative identity. Identity. So like an example here, it's, it's that um, you can multiply any of those numbers by one and you get that number. So like a natural number is two. Two times one is two. Right, identity means you get itself um, Inverse means that you can use the opposite of it to get either one or zero. So we'll talk about the next one. Uh, whole numbers, All right? Whole numbers are pretty much natural numbers with the exception that it has zero. So this does also have the multiplicative identity. Um, but it also has the additive identity. Meaning there is something that you can add to itself to equal itself. Um, so like in this case, it was two times one is equal to two, right? Two is a whole number. And there is something I can add to two to get to two that is zero. And zero is a whole number because, right, whole numbers are this right here. And all two, zero and two are part of this set. Integers, integers have, um, right, some other properties. A set of integers has the multiplicative. I'm just gonna put um, ID for identity. It does have the additive identity, but it has some others. Um, it also has the additive inverse. Right, like I said, uh, let's do three. There's something I can add um, to three to equal zero it is negative three to equal zero. So that's what the inverse is, that I can use the opposite of it to equal zero um, because we do have positive and negative numbers as, as integers. And instead of all rational, it has the multiplicative identity and it has the inverse, I'll put I and V, and it has the additive identity and inverse as well. Okay, anyways, we're, um, we're, this is just kind of a, a small example getting onto activity one. So let's go ahead and move on to the next page. All right, it says converting repeating decimals to fractions. So um, looking at this, right, it says we have, right, just remember rational numbers are numbers that can be written as fractions. Um, but let's look at this. So it says, uh, you will see in the next lesson, even though you, you often approximate square roots using a decimal, most square roots are irrational numbers because you can write all rational numbers in the form of a over b where these numbers are integers um, and write them as terminating decimals right decimals that stop like this so one fourth is a is a rational number it could be a terminating decimal because 0 0.25 or the 25 hundredths um, or repeating decimals anything that repeats so one six, see how the, these sixes repeat here? Those are also rational because I can write it as a fraction, one over six. But it says um, all other decimals are irrational. If it's not terminating or if it's not repeating, it's irrational. They cannot be written as fractions. Okay, but anyways, we're gonna convert some numbers to fractions or vice versa. So we're actually this one, we actually have as a fraction, one third, this as a decimal. Um, let's go ahead and convert that. I think this is actually a common math fact, so you might already know this, 
right? Three cannot go into one, so we're gonna put zero. Let's put our decimal here. Three can go into 10 three times, because it's nine, and it has a remainder of one. And I think you may notice that if we continue this, we get this pattern of threes because we're always gonna have a remainder of one here. I could go to the next place value, but I know it's gonna be a three. So we would say that one third, right? That's a fraction, so we know it's rational, is 0 0.333 dot dot dot. Always put those three dots, the ellipses. Um, then we know that this is a repeating decimal. You would write this as 0 point bar three, but we're, I'm getting a little bit too ahead of myself. We're gonna talk about that in the next uh, page. <clears throat> All right, number two, convert each fraction. Um, we're only gonna do a couple of these. Let's do this one here, and let's do let's do this one here. I'll, I'll leave the other two as you do. So six, so five, six. Remember, whatever's on the bottom, that that is the divisor that goes outside of the fraction. The numerator is what goes on the inside. That's called the dividend. So. Again, six cannot go into five, so we're gonna put a zero. Like I know we use you know calculators for this, but you don't have to use a calculator. Six can go into 50 eight times without going over. Six times eight is 48. Okay, and that has a remainder of two. And just keep in mind, right from this, we're gonna put a zero. Oh, sorry, not there, whoops. Right here. Six can go into 23 times, which is 18. And you get a three. Oh, sorry, a two as a remainder. And we, let's go through this one more time because if I put another zero here, you're gonna see that we're gonna get another 20 because, um, right, it's, it's product uh, six times three is another 18. We're gonna get another remainder of two. So final answer here, is 0 0.833, I'll put another three here, just to indicate that it's repeating. Um, good, we'll, we'll, we'll leave it there. Let's go to the next one. 11, 11 cannot go into nine. And we know products of 11, let's go to 90. Now 11 times nine is 99, so that's way too far. So let's do eight. 11 times eight is 88. This remainder here is just, two okay that's different we'll put a zero 11 can go into 20 right 11 times 1 is 1 11 times 2 is 22 that's going too much so let's put one all right we're gonna do 20 minus 11 which is a remainder of nine put another zero here and we get back to our original problem right that 11 can go into 90 eight times 88 and we see we get a, this repeating decimal, but it's like slightly different though. Um, we're gonna put another one there, right? It's repeating, but it's repeating two different numbers. This is 0 0.8181, write it like that. So you can write this as 81, well, repeating 81 hundredths or repeating 8,181 ten thousandths. <clears throat> okay, but you're welcome to try this other one. You're welcome to plug into your calculator or just simplify it uh, by hand. Um, number three, explain why you call these decimals, decimal represents, representations, repeating decimals. It's because we'll say one or more digits repeat. Plural repeat. Okay. All right, but let's actually get to um, that specific notation. We're going to be converting and then, um, we have some other stuff to do in this lesson with an activity one and two. So next page, on page 529, it says terminating decimals is a decimal that has a finite, right? That's the opposite set of infinite. Infinite means continues forever. Finite number of non-zero digits it means that it ends, it stops. So ends slash stops. So an example of this is this number, right? 125 thousands that is the decimal equivalent of one over eight or one divided by eight so we know that terminating decimals are rational actually let's go and write this off to the right i'll put sideways these two types are 
rational. If you see a decimal that stops like 0 0.5, 0 0.23, 0 0.125, um, rational. We can rep represent that as a fraction. Also repeating decimals, repeat a decimal that with digits that repeat in uh, sets of one or more. So we'll just put that it repeats. You can use two different notations where we can re represent this as, and we actually did this earlier. You can represent them in bar notation. Right, we already know that, right? Or we can represent it as a fraction itself. And remember, anything a fraction is rational. So what we're gonna do for this, for number four, it says um, write each repeating decimal from question two that we did earlier um, as a, in, in both notations. So this one, we got zero, zero point, um, I think it was eight, three, 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 but that in bar notation is zero point eight three. And I'm just gonna put a bar over what was repeating. So not over the eight, only over the three. Okay, the other one that we did was C, that is 0 0.8181 as a repeating decimal. But that in bar notation, it's the eight one that repeats. So we're gonna put zero point. We would read this as zero point, um, right? It, it is a bar eighty one hundredths. Um, if you if you got the answer on the Udus for the previous one, for this one, this is zero point, and it's a repeating two. That would be zero point bar two tenths. And the other one, D, would be 0 0.13636. Dot, dot, dot. That in bar notation, the one doesn't repeat. It only happens once. The thing that does repeat is the 36. So we're going to put a bar over the 3 and the 6, like that. All right, so we have it in repeating notation and um, bar notation. And then this bottom part, it says some repeating decimals represent common fractions. So like... I mean, if you don't know this yet, like one third, right? We know that this is zero point, a repeating three. Two thirds, this is a repeating six, right? You could do one six as well. Um, anyway, so, so we have some things that are more in common than others, but we're now gonna get to this next part, whoops, which is when you have um, a repeating decimal, how do you know to write the fraction of that? Now, there are things that we know how to write fractions of, and you can use the place value with that. Like what I mean by this is, let's say 0 0.5. The way you convert this to a fraction, if you don't know, is how you say the number. This in place value is 5 tenths. So 5 over 10. If you simplify 5 tenths, right, you can divide both of them by 5, it's 1 half. We know that. Um, like let's say this number here. Oh, whoops, I'm going the other way. Whoops, let's do this. 0 0.40. The way that we say this is 40, and it's in the hundreds place. That's how you convert it to um, a fraction. Now, we can get rid of those zeros there, so this is technically 4 tenths. We can simplify this even further. Divide both of them by 2, you can get 2 fifths. So that's, that's how you convert a decimal into a fraction. But the way that we do this for repeating decimals, slightly different. And this, this is a, a, a little bit more complex, um, complex, uh, let's say just steps. It just has more steps here. So we're gonna convert this into a fraction. So repeating four, bar four. Step one, write, a fra write an equation by setting the decimal equal to the variable representing that fraction. Step two, identify the repeating digits. Step three, write a new equation that shows the repeating pattern uh, to the left of the decimal point and then subtract the equations. So before we get to that, I do wanna show this. Right, we know when we multiply with 10, right, what, is it, what does it do and what happens there? So 10 times four is 40. The reason is because, like if I put a decimal here, that's 4.0, which is the same thing as four. Multiplying by 10 just moves that decimal one to the right. So the next one, 10 times 10, I'll put a decimal here, right? 10.0 is the same thing as 10. That 10 just moves again, right? One to the right. And 100 times five, we know that's 500, right? This is the same thing as this. This is like, think about this as $5. Since I multiply by 100, 
it moves that two to the right. Okay, pretty much it's based on, if you look at 10, it's based on how many zeros you have. This tells me it has one zero, move it once to the right. One zero, once to the right. Two zeros, two to the right. So that's gonna be an important idea here. Because what we have here, 0 point bar 4 in the 10th place is 0 point, 4, 4, 4, forever. But what you can do here is we want to we want to take this, we're removing this 1 to the right. So what happens here is we get 10w, I multiply this by 10, and I multiply this by 10, we're going to get 4 point, and then repeating 4. So that's what we get right here but what we want to do is we want to subtract the decimal part of this number how to do that is we're going to take what we originally had and subtract it so underneath this i'm going to put minus and that exact same thing in blue w equal to 0.44 now i'm going to subtract these two equations we're subtracting here so that's why we have this minus sign here so if I subtract, if you keep this on the left side, 10, 10 W minus one W is nine W. And if you subtract, you have to line up the decimal points, right? $4 and 44 cents minus 44 cents. These 44 cents thing goes away. You're just left with $4. And how we get our final answer. We have this equation. We know how to solve this equation. We divide both sides by nine to solve for W, and that's how we get the fraction that represents that repeating decimal, which is um, four ninths. And you can plug this into your calculator, right? Four divided by nine is a repeating four. So that's the idea here. We're taking that, that decimal and representing it as a fraction. Okay, um, off to the right, I put just base tens here. So this is an important idea. We had to know to multiply by 10. If you want, so like for this, if you want to multi, if you want to move the decimal point one to the right, multiply by a ten. If you multi, if you want to move the decimal point two to the right, multiply by a hundred. Three to the right, multiply by a thousand. Okay, so just be mindful of that. Um, number five, we're gonna skip. We pretty much already answered that. Oops, let's go over. A couple of these. Let's go over this first one. So this first one here for A, it's it's a repeating five. So we're gonna write that. We're gonna put W equal to this entire thing. But what I'm gonna put underneath this, I need to move the decimal point one to the right because I, I want it, um, just like what our step said, write a new equation that shows the repeating decimal to the left of the decimal point. So if I multiply this, this will, on the right side, this will be 5.555. I have the thing that was repeating, which is five on the left side. And since I move that one to the right, this will be 10W. Okay. Now what we want to do here is we want to subtract the decimal part. I do not want this 0.5 part, but we have this here. This is represented right here. And that is equal to W. So we're going to subtract this equation with this equation. 10w minus w is 9w. And $5.55 and change minus 55 cents, that goes away. And now what we have is five minus zero, which is just five. So the fraction that represents this decimal, if you divide both sides by nine, we're gonna have w equal to five ninths. I, I encourage you, plug this into your calculator right now. You will get a repeating five. Okay, um, next part here, let's go to C. Okay, so this is actually written as a, as a, in bar notation. So let's represent this in repeating notation. So W, I'm, I'm just putting a random variable. We could put X, A, B, doesn't matter. We're gonna put 0 0.1212 dot dot dot. Now this, in order for me to get that repeating part, which is 12 to the left side, I've got to move this two to the right. Now remember, if I move this two to the right, I got to multiply by 100, not by 10. 10 will only move it one to the right. So if I move this two to the right, this will be 100W 
equal to, let me put 12, that repeating part on the left side, and I'll just continue and put that re the repeating part also to the right side. Now again, we want to get rid of this part, which is the remainder, so to speak, and that was represented by this entire thing. So let's write that again underneath, W equal to zero point, I line up the decimal points here, one, two, one, two, and we're gonna subtract. 100W minus W is 99W. And if I subtract our decimals here, right, all that change goes away, we're left with a 12. To solve this equation, just like here I, I divided by nine, I'm gonna have to divide this not by nine, but by 99, so we get a fraction. W is equal to 12 over 99. Now you can write it like that. The thing is, typically you wanna simplify your fractions. So this, we can actually divide this both by three. So we could get 12 divided by three is four and 99 divided by three is 33. So this maybe is our final answer. Plug that to your calculator, guaranteed it's gonna equal what's in red. Okay. You're welcome to do B and C as a you do, but I just want you to keep that in mind. This is how we represent repeating decimals as fractions. So when we get to our assignment, that's gonna be the thing you're, you're gonna be asked to do. Okay, um, we're gonna go through this somewhat quickly because this video is getting a little bit long. Um, but here it says solve each linear equation, or write the solution as a decimal. I circled four, but we might just do two. Um, let's go through, I'm, I'm just gonna start at three here. I apologize for this uh, video being somewhat long. Right, when we solve equations, remember, we move variables to one side. Let me move this to the right side. I'm gonna add 10x with this 8x over here. We don't want it on the left side, we're left with two equal to negative three. On the right side, it is plus 18x. And let's move that constant to the right side. So I'm gonna add three since it's subtracting. And we're gonna be left with five equal to 18x. All right, let me divide both sides by 18. And this isn't a super nice problem because we're gonna have 18 equal to, we're gonna represent this right side, or sorry, left side, as some type of repeating um, decimal, represent the solution as a decimal. So five 18s, let's do this off to the right. I'm gonna divide, by, divide five by 18. All right, we don't need a calculator, this is zero. Okay, five can go into um, 50, I think two times, right? 18 times two is 36. All right, if we subtract that, we should get 14. If we put a, a, a zero here, we're gonna put, that is 140. So for that, um, how many times can 100, or sorry, 18 go into 140, uh, that is seven times, right? And then for that, let me use my calculator, we'll go 18 divided, or times, seven is 126. And you may notice we get another, oh, whoops, this will be 10, this will be three. Oh, we get another 14. So we're gonna get another 14. This is gonna be another seven. Hold on, let me see if I multiply that right. 18 times seven, yeah. So this will be zero point, we can round this to, to the, to, for that to be seven, so zero point um, two seven, but that seven will repeat. Um, so I'm gonna put actually dot, dot, dot right there. Okay, let's do one more. Let's go through this, this, this top one, number two. Okay, we'll say the other ones are you do's. So we wanna solve this for M. This one's slightly easier. Uh, M is already on the right side, so let's move our other constants to the left side. So I'm gonna subtract this negative $2.25 to the other side, negative $2.25. Um, 2 minus 2.27 is going to be just negative 0 0.27 equal to negative m 
divided by 4. Um, I guess I could put that negative with the 4 here because in order to get rid of dividing by negative 4, we're going to multiply both sides by negative 4. We multiply this side by negative 4. We're going to have m equal to our final answer here. At, uh, let's multiply. Let's put this. A negative times negative is a positive, so we don't have to worry about the signs. But let's do 0 0.27 times 4. 27 hundredths. Right, this is 28. Right, 2 times 4 is 8, plus 2 is 10. And then our decimal is, if you count from the far right, is 2 spaces from the right. So we move this 2 spaces to, from the right. This is 1.08. It's kind of nice. This wasn't repeating. So $1.08, $1.08. Hundreds is our final answer. Okay, you're welcome to do one and five uh, for extra practice, but um, we're gonna skip that. We're gonna skip talk to talk, but let's get to our assignment. Our assignment on 533, we're gonna do a couple of things. We're gonna go through, normally we don't go through journal, but I want you to go through journal, one through four. And we're gonna do practice, everything on the front and the back, so that's numbers one and two. So one, you're converting these, into some type of uh, terminating or repeating decimal. On the back, we're converting this to fractions, so keep that in mind, okay? We'll go through some practice, but go to give this your best shot. Um, let me know if you have questions.